In this video, I attempt to do the 100 heads challenge. This is probably one of the most well-known art challenges on YouTube, drawing 100 heads in 10 days. I started off really strong. I was passionate. I had goals set. I had a whole bunch of new mediums to try and I was ready to experiment and play. But as the days went on, I failed. And this is a story about that failure. If you're new here, I'm so happy that you've joined and I'm Han, I'm an artist, I'm a designer and I make all sorts of creative videos about my creative life. So let's just jump right into this video. It is not a nice feeling, failing. And I did not want to fail, but I did. And sometimes these things, they just happen. They can be out of our control. You see, I fell sick halfway through the challenge and I ended up in bed for like three and a half, four days with a pretty bad cold. And I just had absolutely no energy to draw over these days that I was sick and the days that I was recovering. So it kind of really knocked me off my feet and I didn't manage to get back on track to the challenge because I was catching up on work that I had missed because I obviously work in the day. And I only ended up doing half of the challenge. So in this video, you are going to see me draw roughly half of the heads that are supposed to be in the 100 heads challenge. Now, I guess that I could have just lied and continued with the challenge, but you know, that's not really what I wanted. And I did want to actually take this seriously and do 100 heads in 10 days. You know, that's what I signed up for, that's what I was ready for, that's what I was prepared for. And so I was really frustrated that I didn't end up completing the challenge in the set time frame, or actually at all, because I didn't end up doing all 100 heads. And I'm a pretty determined person, but for this challenge, I just couldn't finish it. And I wanna talk about it. I wanna talk about artists and failure, and how I'm always afraid to fail. But I also want to talk about how failure is sometimes so necessary in our creative journeys. And we shouldn't be scared to fail, even if it's something as small as a 100 heads YouTube challenge. You see, creative people are very resilient. We're crazy resilient, actually. We say yes to things that we have never even done before, never even attempted before. We get an opportunity cr to create something cool and we nod our heads and we agree before we even know what the first step is that we need to take. And nine out of 10 times we persevere and do something really, really cool. And the client nine out of 10 times usually really, really likes it and has no idea all the grafting and hard work that went into crash course learning that thing in a couple of days. But we learn things along the way because the best way to learn things in our line of work is simply just to try and fail until we succeed. So as horrible as failure is, there is some beauty in it because there is always some sort of educational aspect of it. So before we get into the whole conversation of artists and failure and how to move on from it and to motivate yourself to get out of it, I just want to quickly give you a bit of insight into what this 100 heads challenge actually is so that you have some background if you've never heard of this challenge. So the 100 heads challenge was started by Amit Eldori and I think it was also his friend Danny as well. They're also an artist. They released a Pinterest board with 100 different portrait images. Very diverse, a very wide range of portraits, positions, facial expressions, head accessories and so on. And the aim is to complete all 100 heads in 10 days. Now you've got to do it in 10 days. That is the whole purpose of the challenge because it is challenging. It's not easy to do that. I have also linked the Pinterest board in the description of this video. So if you want to try out this challenge, you can and maybe you will succeed and get a bit further than I did. But back to the challenge, this is a really, really cool challenge because it is not very easy to do. It equals out to roughly doing 10 heads per day. So yeah, then that's the math. So if you want to do it like that. 
Now, many artists tackle the 100 hedge challenge differently, but I do think that it's important to set goals to help you really get the most out of this challenge. My goals were to try a whole bunch of different art mediums and dabble in a lot of mixed media. I also wanted to try all sorts of drawing and painting techniques and all sorts of different drawing styles over the 10 days. I wanted to push my boundaries and try new things and really make full use of those 100 different heads and positions. For example, I hadn't really used alcohol markers much before this challenge, but now I have learned that I actually really, really enjoy them. So much so that I actually went out and bought an entire set of 200 alcohol markers because I actually had so much fun just playing with my cheapo ones that I was like, hey, I actually want to get some that are actually kind of good quality so I can really learn more about this art medium. And so that was really, really cool. And that was a positive that came out of this. I also found that I loved working in ballpoint pen. Now, I've always loved pen, but I hadn't really worked in it since probably back when I was in high school. Otherwise, I haven't really drawn in pen and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So that is something that I'm definitely going to be practicing more of. And I'm actually working on a really cool project at the moment. Hopefully that video is going to be released next week. Something to do with the ballpoint pen, but you'll have to wait and see. But anyway, very exciting things happening in the studio. I always love to try new techniques and new mediums. So I was having so much fun throughout this challenge. I was putting random bits of paint and then adding markers and then adding cookies and then going with pencil and then smudging it and then using pencil crayon and then going in with more pen and then water markers and then alcohol markers. So it was really, really fun and I got to truly just play and that was my main goal of this challenge. It is quite funny though because I absolutely hated the first page that I did for this challenge and I actually ended up going all the way back and then going over them with alcohol markers because I just absolutely hated it. I almost stuck it together with glue and just got rid of it. But again, number one tip from artist to fellow artist, never ever ever throw away your sketches or things that you don't like because you can always work back into them and they are also a really great way to see how far you've come if you decide to redraw it or you know learn a bit more about your medium and then you can compare so it's very good to not cover it up or not throw it away or not destroy something that you don't like because they are crucial in seeing your journey and how you have learned to get better at that medium or improve your skill. This is why when I was studying graphic design at university, when we had to draw sketches or scamps for logo designs, we were only allowed to draw in pen. We weren't allowed to use a pencil because you couldn't erase your pen. And they wanted to see every single bit of your thinking from the most terrible sketches that you have to the beautifully crisp and precise defined logos. They want to see that process from start to finish and see where you came from and then where you ended up. So I like to apply the same thing with my sketchbooks. I always keep the ugly artworks, even though they are so horrible, but they are crucial for understanding who you are as an artist and understanding how you grow and get better. So jumping back into this topic of failure as an artist and feeling like you failed something because you didn't complete it. So as I said earlier, you know, I was really frustrated that I didn't finish this challenge. I was so excited to have it done. I've been wanting to do this challenge for years. Like I'm not even joking. I think it's It's been on my to-do list for almost three years now to do this challenge. And now I was at a time where I finally had the time, I finally had the drive, I finally had the resources to do it. I had a YouTube channel to film it and to share it. I had all this excitement and I flopped halfway through. But in another light, I look at it and I think, you know, I wasn't well, I was sick, I was recovering from a really bad cold and I had other work to do and it's not the end of the world if I didn't complete it. Yes, you know, I was excited and I was sharing it to my Instagram stories and I kind of felt obliged to complete the challenge um, because I was like, hey, my followers have seen that I've started this challenge and all of a sudden I've stopped. And it's like, okay, what? is she done is she still continuing like what's happening well okay now you all know i failed it (laughs) 
But I think a lot of artists, we do this. We post things to our followers to hold ourselves accountable that we do end up, you know, finishing certain things. And if we don't finish it, we feel bad, you know, like we've let ourselves down. But sometimes that's not always the case. And I'm looking back at it now, and although it's bumming that I didn't finish it, there are other opportunities and there are other art challenges. And, you know, maybe a year from now or a couple of months from now, I will have the time again to sit down and spend the 10 days drawing all 100 heads and it's going to turn out 100 times better than what I currently did. But I can't just focus on the negatives of this. I've got to look at some of the positives that came out of this challenge. First up, I ended up drawing half of them. So, I mean, already in itself, that's really, really good. And I managed to try a whole bunch of different mediums as well. I used paint, I used pencil, pen, I used pencil crayon, aqua markers, alcohol markers. I don't know, I can't even remember what other things I used. but. I used a lot of different mediums and that was the initial goal that I wanted to do. I also did some highly detailed heads and I did some really sketchy heads. Well, sketchy makes it sound dodge. I'm sketchy, I mean like sketched look and feel. <laughs> sketched style. And I got to play with different proportions and different sizes and I got to play with different layouts and usually in a sketchbook I would never draw over the center fold of the sketchbook but in this one I did. As you can see here, I was trying and that is something new that I usually won't do in my sketchbooks, but it all worked out and it was really cool. And I did end up pushing boundaries and trying things that I don't usually do. And personally, I hardly ever draw in A4 sized sketchbooks. For me, I find them very intimidating because there is so much space. <laughs> so I don't usually work in them. But for this one, I specifically said to myself, Han, you're going to work in an A4 sketchbook for this challenge because you know that you're intimidated by it and you know it's going to make it tougher for you. And you're going to look at these giant empty white pages and freak out, but we're going to continue. And that is something else that I'm really proud of that although I didn't finish the challenge, I took on this giant A4 sketchbook. Usually I work a bit more compact and I use an A5 sketchbook because then I know that I can easily fill it up. And by making myself use the larger sketchbook, I actually really enjoyed it. And it is something that I want to actually do again because I had so much space, I could play with layouts and try new things and put things on one side and the other side and connect them and use sticky notes and it was quite fun. So to sum it up, although I didn't finish the challenge, I looked back at all the things that I accomplished by the halfway mark, which is where I ended, and I did end up completing the goals that I originally set out to do and not completing the other half. I'm kind of more inclined to want to finish this challenge. I'm more inclined to want to experiment and set new goals for the next time because I know that I can do it. So as much as it was a failure, I still feel accomplished and I still feel happy with the work that I have done. And I think going forward, this is a very important lesson to learn in our art field is sometimes you're going to have setbacks, you're going to have things that don't work out, but you've just got to look at the positives that you can take away from it and how you can use those to then grow and push yourself further and really push even more of your boundaries. I'm talking about like creative boundaries just for clarity. Looking back while I was editing this video, I saw some portraits that I loved and I saw some portraits that I hate. And so the next time I actually attempt this challenge, which will be the time that I finish it, I am 100% sure of it this time because I'm very determined. But the next time I take on this challenge, I know that I have new goals that are different to my previous goals. And I have more of a strategy of how I want to tackle this and I can think about if I want to use a specific medium or a certain size of sketchbook however I want to do them but it gives me more to think about the next time I attempt this so I would not say that this was a negative form of failure there are such things called positive failures. Well, okay, I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm making it a thing. Positive failures where you feel bummed, obviously, but you are more motivated to move on, to try again. That is that resilience that I was talking about that artists have, is yes, you got knocked down, but now you're 10 times more motivated to just get back out there and to do it again and to show yourself, hey, I can do this. And it's not doing it for anyone else, it's just doing it for your own personal growth, your own personal art journey. 
I think a lot of the time we get caught up in what other people want us to do. Do this or do that or draw this or well, you know you're gonna do so well if you just paint that and sometimes yes that is good because it's what the people want but it's not gonna fulfill you deep down inside what makes you truly happy and you've got to find what makes you truly happy. Even if it involves some setbacks and some failures you've just got to push on and say hey well I'm gonna try another day. So as you can see over here, I just completed number 49. So I'm roughly almost exactly halfway. And this was sort of where I ended up finishing off the challenge because I think it was the day after this that I sort of got flu and then I ended up just being in bed for a couple of days because I wasn't really well. So this was kind of where, yeah, I sort of ended up the challenge. I think there was like, okay, we'll see now now, but I think there was like 50 something. I went back into doing pen because I went to the shops and I got this little pen that has the four little push down buttons that you used to draw with when you were a kid. And I got so excited and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go and draw with this pen. I got so super excited and I only ended up doing four drawings. No, three, three drawings with this pen. So maybe next time when i do this challenge again i will use the pen again anyway guys thank you so much for watching this week's hand sealer art video and i hope that you were able to take away some sort of snippet or information from this video that helps you along your art journey in some way if you like this video please give it a thumbs up because it really supports me and drop a subscribe if you would like that too yeah anyway if you have a favorite head by the way let me know in the comments because i'd love to know Otherwise, have a great day or night wherever you are in the world and I will see you soon. Bye.